Philippine cockatoo Renton has been courting Magenda for just over six months. And they appear to still enjoy each other's company. It's a very tactile relationship, very close. They sit next to each other and they alloprene, which is where they'll use their beak to kind of preen the feathers normally on the back of the, the neck. They, they mate for life and they remain utterly committed to their partner. But if the wrong pairing is made, the male cockatoo can get violent with their partner. You often find the case that birds just do not like each other. As a result, there's the risk of aggression. Renton is very gentle uh, for a Philippine cockatoo, an absolute gent, he's a good lad. You, you hear it all the time that zookeepers maintain a professional distance from their animals because they don't want to get too involved. Nah, can't do it. Their personalities are too strong. You, you can't help but form bonds and you can't help but care. You'd look at him and you think he's you know, big and strong and very impressive looking. But when it comes down to it, he's, he's just a big softy, really. Goshi very much wears the trousers in this relationship. For Goshi to accept him as a mate, he's got to become more dominant. Goshi certainly wants the biggest, strongest, fiercest jaguar out there. You know, she wants the best genes possible for her cubs. So she's not going to go for the, for the soppy, lazy, can't be bothered male. Napo definitely needs to man up a little bit. It's been several weeks since Napo the jaguar was taken off his contraceptive. And he's behaving a little differently. Napo's really started to come into his own. He's started to be a lot more of a, a dominant male around that area. You know, he, he comes strutting his stuff into the dens, whereas before he'd really take his time and he'd be a lot more chilled. And you can definitely see a big change in his character. He is starting to put Gucci in her place a bit more. She maybe doesn't get away with as many things um, before he tells her off. <laughs> you can get all the uh, factors right. You can get two great sets of genetics. You can get the enclosure down to a T. But at the end of the day, those two individuals have got to be receptive to each other and actually find each other attractive. Not surprisingly, Henning makes the first move towards Roxy's home. And Roxy seems interested enough to venture outside. There's your girlfriend, mate. <laughs> You know, a male will hopefully be showing her some attention and she hasn't had that in a while. So maybe she'll play hard to get or maybe she'll take him to bed straight away. Who knows? Despite being watched, Roxy isn't chasing Henning away. <laughs> I like Henning's chatting up techniques. <laughs> if Roxy's not feeling comfortable, her quills will be up and that's expected. But once her and Henning have investigated each other, hopefully we will see them together with quills down resting. And then that will be a really good indication that there's nothing untoward going on there. Roxy seems intrigued, if not completely convinced. He's just very much focused on Gita. He will just stick by her side, focused on her, be aggressive towards anyone or anything that comes near her. 
For a couple of days now, that's basically all it's going to be about is him being by her side and whenever she gives the green light, mating her. <laughs> Sun bear Tony is settling well into his new home. He's really loving the new habitat. He spends loads of time up the trees and he lies right in front of the windows having a nap, snoring away. Old flame Millie has also made the move, but they've been kept in separate areas. Hey, Millie. Today, they're about to be reunited. It's time to go meet Tony again. You ready? All right, Millie. The bears have never produced a surviving cub together. <laughs> you do sometimes think it's never going to happen. But then she had the cub in January, which I didn't survive, but it, it's given us hope. Keepers are banking on their new love den to make all the difference. We really want them to get on really well, relationship to blossom, and hopefully that'll be the place to start a family. Have fun. There she goes. As Millie makes her appearance, Tony goes all out to impress. You can see how ripped he is. He's just showing off. Um, I'd be impressed if I put that much effort in at the gym, I think. Mating has always been on Millie's terms, and in their old home, Tony was getting the cold shoulder. But it seems Tony's flirting is starting to melt Millie's heart. Courtship has started and it's in full swing. There's lots of um, hugging and fondling. This is all part of the courtship behaviour, them wrestling and playing, and there's a lot of neck biting. Bit of a headlock there. It's all part of it. The love bears are becoming inseparable. Whether they're dining out together... It's all part of the courtship, I guess. Taking her out for dinner. ..or heading back inside for afters. Oh, there we go. Oh, gee. <laughs> oh, she's looking that. When animals have close bond with, a, with another creature, it does definitely help them. It gives them strength and it gives them someone to sort of tell them it's going to be all all right, even though they might be struggling. The zoo know that in the long run, this is all in Mary's best interests, as her body can no longer cope with having babies. But losing her status as the longest standing breeding female is going to be tough. <laughs>